Today we're going to be getting into the interesting choices the Twitch team recently has decided to make. These seemingly look like they're going head to head with some of their highest grossing streamers and challenging their net worth. By the end of this video, you guys can decide if the leading streaming platform will be able to stick around a bit longer, or if these decisions will end in their downfall. So let's begin. First up, is Twitch challenging its value? If you've been online recently, you've heard the names of popular streamers like Valkyrie or Pokemon. These ladies are among some of the most famous internet personalities of today's age. Trust us, even if you haven't heard of them, a lot of youngins have. But it looks like this popularity isn't the biggest pride and joy of the bosses upstairs. On Friday, Twitch president Dan Clancy stated that the site is changing its existing income-splitting plan for the platform's greatest players, and reducing the share a streamer gets from 70% to an even 50-50 split. In their words, the same split will be given to the network's other producers. We don't need to explain why that had raised some alarms, because as it was, the decision angered streamers of all sizes, and just left some amazed because of how insane the deal seemed. So then you may be asking, why are they choosing to go down such a dangerous path? Path. Well, there are many theories for that answer, but as Twitch has indicated in multiple posts, the cost of streaming for so many people across the internet is a struggle they're trying to solve. At the same time, that seems unbelievable to many people because of how many viewers the top streamers have pulled over the years. Shouldn't that have been enough? Well, unless someone got into some pretty unfortunate deals, following up, making a leveled playing field. See, one of the executive's biggest arguments was that this allowed everyone to have the same result. Well, if a lot of other things are the same as well with the top streamers. Twitch creators' main arguments were that they felt that the 50-50 split paid to most streamers was too low, especially because their competitors like YouTube gave everyone a 70-30 split. And what's more, Twitch's decision to cut the income cap has ruined the hopes of smaller creators of getting a raise shortly. This means that the same faces that have more or less monopolized the app could stay comfy in their spots for an unforeseeable amount of time. But for stars at the top, Twitch is challenging them to move to YouTube. After all, they just found out that they could be losing thousands of dollars every month. Though this may look like a danger for the site, it seems like Twitch doesn't feel it needs its celebrity streamers. The company is betting that its consumers are so loyal that it can simply create new stars, rather than paying a higher price to keep the ones it already has. Well, whether that boldness will pay off or not, only time will tell. Next up, hopping from Twitch to YouTube. Some streamers, like Valkyrie, have already proven that a move to YouTube can be highly successful, but many others often see a drop in viewership because their entire Twitch audience won't migrate to their new platform. This was something that streamers had learned during Twitch's first big exodus, when personalities like Shroud and Ninja signed deals with Microsoft's now defunct Mixer platform. So it's not a done deal that moving between such big platforms is a piece of cake. And more importantly, especially for smaller streamers, Twitch is by far the best platform for discovering new streams. Look, YouTube's discoverability is terrible, the live hub is hard to find, and the site strongly pushes for algorithms over categories. And this issue creates a feedback loop in which YouTube is forced to partner with big streamers who can bring in an established audience to get viewers. But those viewers are only fans of that creator, and because discovery Discovering someone new is difficult. Increased viewers for one streamer will not simply lead to growth for other smaller streamers, making a monopoly again. If that wasn't enough reason for a second thought with this jump, Twitch has another secret weapon in the streaming war, Twitch Prime, a free perk of an Amazon Prime membership that gives the user one free Twitch subscription each month. Both viewers and streamers benefit. Evil, isn't it? Following that, can Twitch stay on top? Look, all of this has led to Twitch maintaining a significant lead over its streaming platform rivals for many, many years now, even having lost some top-tier talent to sites like YouTube, while Twitch stars like Pokemane and Hassan continue to have immense power. Twitch's new policy makes it apparent who's pulling the strings. Guys, trust us, all of this, it's a power play as well as anything right now. And more importantly, even if Twitch loses creators like XQC or Code Miko, it's hard to picture hundreds upon thousands of lesser streamers switching to a rival right now. Because unfortunately, at the moment, it is the only streaming platform with the necessary tools to assist them in becoming stars. So do you think there's any choice in these players jumping ship now? Or, as Mr. B said, could YouTube figure out their stuff sooner than we think? If they have the right people on board, that is. Now let's move on to some other related news. Firstly, life outside of Twitch for Amaranth. Trigger warning. This part of the video includes topics 
topics of domestic abuse and mentions of animal cruelty. Amaranth, a popular Twitch streamer and OnlyFans content creator, revealed in an emotional stream on Saturday that her spouse has been manipulating and abusing her. Caitlin Siragusa said that her unnamed spouse forced her to stream, threatened to harm her pets, and took control of her funds and bank account. Amaranth explained on the webcast, I'm basically living in a luxury prison. Now, though her Twitch stream has since been deleted, snippets of it have been widely shared on Twitter and YouTube. Many people have had different reactions and have sparked up many topics that can honestly be completely valid or anger you to no end. In the stream, she'd shown a close-up of her phone screen showing a text thread between her and her spouse. The shown messages insulted her and threatened to even drop baggage, toss merch from a balcony, and remove Amaranth's social media. They also include more serious threats of financial abuse and threats to murder her dog. She also released a video of a damaged doorknob, claiming that her husband broke it, stopping her from locking the door. But her content lead, Mars, tweeted on Monday that she claims she's alright, and added police have gone many times since 5 a.m. yesterday. So, at this point, her fans and creator friends have sent messages of concern, on and off stream, and we are doing the same. Next up, let's talk about what happened at TwitchCon. Well, what didn't happen, honestly? If you weren't aware, TwitchCon, the Twitch convention that celebrates all things streaming, and gaming was held last weekend, and it was definitely pretty eventful, to say the least. Short version, in addition to Master Chief grinding away on Megan the Stallion on stage, one streamer damaged her back and another fractured her ankle while playing in show activities. But the worst injury came during a Lenovo, an Intel promotion called Face Off. In this gladiators-style competition, two competitors used huge, padded poles to knock each other from podiums and into a pit filled with foam cubes. But whoever put those cubes in the pit should have used them more freely, especially since some streamers jump from the podiums afterward. Adriana Chechik, a Twitch live streamer and adult performer with over 800,000 followers, was one of them. See as Chechik jumped off the podium after winning and splitting in midair. She fell flat on her tailbone, and if that wasn't bad already, in a vid shot of the moment when she says, I can't get up, the announcer responds with, no, no, she's fine. What? If you've seen other clips or reaction videos of our experience at TwitchCon, you'll unfortunately see the theme of complete chaos that was this weekend. Yikes! Lastly, Capcom is back. And of course, just in time for spooky season. As announced on Twitter yesterday, October 17th, the developer and publisher will stream the event live on Twitch. This coming Thursday, October 20th at 11 p.m. BST. And when we say we're excited, that is a huge understatement. The event will reveal things on the Resident Evil Village Gold Edition, coming out on December 12th, and the Resident Evil 4 Remake due out March 24th, 2023, and more. As we've been updated, the next release looks like it'll be a reimagining of the 2005 survival horror classic using the framework of prior series remakes. In a PlayStation blog, it was said that the title would reimagine the tale from the original game while keeping the spirit and update the graphics and control. Honestly, this can end up being a top-tier Halloween. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think of Twitch's bold business decision? Do you think the platform could keep on growing, or has it hit itself on its foot? Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.